welcome to another Mr. B's Bite video, and this one's a little bit different insofar as it's cake. Yes, that is a cake tape, and uh, it's my birthday, and I'm not going to say how old I am, um, but uh, yes, I have been very lucky insofar as I have a Betamax cassette tape cake. That almost rhymes. So anyway, this video is going to be a bit different just because it's a collection of lots of bits and pieces. Um, sort of finalizing some videos I've done previously, also some bits that I have previously recorded, and some updates and other bits and pieces. So uh, with that, let's crack on. The big chopper. <laughs> um, how should I cut? Should I just cut it? It's your cake, you cut it however you like. So, here we go. Oh, that looks wrong. <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> I'll be able to take this back under warranty. <laughs> My tape doesn't work, it's for the cake. <laughs> oh, look at that! Wow! Let's cut the tape as well. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be worse. It's gonna be messy. I'd hope that no parts fall out. <laughs> or is it just going to be another cake inside? <laughs> Look at that. Wow. <laughs> so, fruity loaf and chocolate cake. Nom nom. Nom nom nom. So, you might remember on the um, Class of Ace 2 video, I did mention in the comments or the description for the video that uh, I had a copyright strike on the original one, so I took it down. And uh, it's actually quite interesting uh, w how that did actually come about. So uh, let's actually go to it and see details. And uh, content found during 20 minutes 14 to 22.40. So what's really odd about this is it's actually the Sony SLC6 playback of the same portion that both the Sanyo VTC 5000 and the Toshiba V9600 um, had also played. So <laughs> it's just really weird and it just proves just how good the quality is from a Sony C6 even though um, the tape was quite poorly. Um, I chose that on purpose because it was fairly damaged. Just to give you an idea, if you're going to sort of uh, copy over tapes, what the result would be if the tape is slightly damaged, which invariably they will be in this day and age. But uh, yeah, so if we just play this, and uh, you can see it's um, Sony C6 Mark II. Uh, go back to the um, VTC 5000 and it's outside of the window of um, copyrights uh, even though the VTC 5000 results are really good I have to say but uh, not good enough for the YouTube uh, scanning and the V9600 was I mean the results were good uh, apart from color banding um, it was actually really good, but it's the uh, C6 that caused the issues, um, even though it was flickering about and yeah, crazy. So there you go, um, just a little bit of an insight into really how YouTube is actually a really good way of finding out how good your machine is, <laughs> how good the quality is, you get a copyright strike against your, your um, uh, Betamax captures, then uh, you know it's a good machine that you're capturing on. So, yeah, just thought I'd share that. So, quite a fun one, this one, <laughs> insofar as I have something a bit special in here, but special to me any anyway. So, let's open it up. Polystyrene plate. It's good. I'm just going to lift this out wholesale. Oh this 
that. It's going everywhere. So, we have a box. Toshiba B9600. I know how much you love these decks, but <clears throat> I have never seen one of these um, machines in their original packaging. And let's have a look. A bit of extra there. Put a card in. Polystyrene. Look at the plastic that looks like. Oh my goodness. That's really lovely. That's really a very nice B9600. It's so clean. The, um, what's amazing, I don't know if you can see that. The top cover is just wonderful. So different to a machine that's been out in the sort of light and, you know, been used and this hasn't been heavily used that's wonderful and the the paint really pops um so this machine basically i am going to mothball and i say mothball um what i'm going to do is um put it with the Capacitor, the mains capacitor that always pops, um, the idler tyre, the belts, and if I can find one, a uh, pinch roller as well, but I mean, it's probably going to be okay to be fair, they're, they're pretty hardy. And uh, I'm going to put this in storage and I'm going to do this in a few years' time. So uh, as the channel develops and whatever. And <laughs> I get some time to actually look at this. I will get this going and uh, yeah, I'll have a lovely machine. But I also have, where is it? Here it is. Also have the remote. Now it's a cable remote. It's only, it's, it's only a pause control. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put this with it. Um, I have some, um, I have the instruction manual to come as well, which I found on eBay. So I just want this to be like a complete as new or as new as can be B9600. And, uh, yeah, just because I worked on them so much when I was uh, a teenager just really nice to have <laughs> a new old stock in inverted commas machine so i'll put this back up and we'll put it in storage um it will be put in storage with um some silica gel uh, put some pouches around the back there and then seal this up the box will be sealed and then I more than likely may well put it back in the um, original box that it was shipped in. But uh, yeah, really, really pleased with that. Really a very nice machine. And uh, I will put some heads with it as well. I've got some brand new old stock heads. So yeah, this one is a keeper. Even though it's a Toshiba V9600, I know. I know people really don't rate these, but yeah, nice machine. So yeah, that's great. So you might remember this machine from uh, a previous video. This is Laszlo's machine. 
and uh, we went right the way through the servo circuitry trying to find out why the capstan was running super fast and uh, the capstan motor proved in testing anyway to be the issue uh, everything else seemed to be okay uh, but uh, i didn't have a capstan motor at the time or so i thought and uh, digging around and sorting things out i actually came across my spare uh, sled unit so uh, yeah i've got the um, capstan motor and i've also got um, the uh, reel tables which um, will feature in another video with an hf uh, 950 um, that i bought a while ago but I, I now have the reel tables as well so this <laughs> this has actually been incredibly useful to have and i'm glad i saved it so uh, in this segment, I'm going to be changing the capstan motor. Uh, it's actually fairly easy to remove. Uh, screw here, screw here, and these are on springs. And then there's a screw here, down here. And um, this is actually, if you like the critical bits, there's actually the adjustment for the slant, sort of vertical slant of the um, the capstan here. Now I'm hoping just because um, I'm swapping it out from one deck to another, um, these are probably incredibly precisely manufactured anyway. I shouldn't have to adjust that, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And it's a minor thing. I'm, I'm not worried about that. So uh, yeah, I'm going to take this motor out and uh, then we'll investigate putting it in here without taking the sled out, which should be fairly easy to be honest, and uh, take it from there. Motor's out and uh, giving it a jolly good clean. Um, that deck that that came from was really very heavily contaminated. Um, and an added complication is this little assembly here, which I believe goes there. And then you've got to get the screw through. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit bit tricky. Um, I should be able to drop the motor fairly easily without taking any of this apart. Um, and that certainly makes it a lot easier from the bottom as well, because from the base, you can see I'm just, I can just drop the motor out. So... Uh, yeah, hopefully that'll uh, that'll all be good. So uh, yeah, I'll get that changed and uh, I suppose give it a test. Yeah, so this assembly here, um, it looks like the whole lot's come out uh, when I've taken the screw out. And this is what it should be like. So uh, yeah, to be honest, I'll just swap it over and jobs are good. But uh, yeah, how bizarre. All installed and uh, actually went fairly well. Um, it is a little bit of a bodgy way to do this, <laughs> obviously. Um, the biggest problem is getting it past this gear, but if you just gently just rock the motor and sort of manipulate it, it will actually eventually just slide past it. it, it there's no force. Uh, required and you don't want to be putting force against this gear anyway but just gently just sort of rock it and uh, then it will locate in place put the connector back on and uh, you're good to go so i suppose we better give it a go and just see if i was actually right in that uh, initial video uh, i'm suddenly very nervous well that's fixed the problem. Um, I now have a properly running capstan. Uh, I did have to slightly adjust the uh, angle of the capstan because it was crinkling up the tape, running up the pinch roller a bit, but that's fine. It's all good. But I still have problems. I have nothing there. And I've got the, this is a problem I've got with a few 950s where the head speed is just wrong and I've I've gone through with the scope, I've gone through with the meter, I've changed caps um, on one machine and 
I've just really struggled to find out why they are doing this. It's probably something really daft that's causing this. Um, obviously, something clock related, sink issue, I don't know. Um, and I seem to remember I am getting, uh, when I get this problem, I am getting control head pulses as well. But that's for another video. Um, that'll be a fun one to actually investigate. But at least I have sorted the speed issue. And it is this pickup, um, just like we found out with the uh, scope and the meter. So, yeah, we have moved forward at least. <laughs> So some of you might have seen these on uh, eBay, but uh, both of these are from the States, from the US, and uh, this one, it, it was interesting to me because uh, there's actually a lot of um, British um, TV programs on these that were broadcast in the US. So I'm hoping there's sort of lots of US sort of adverts, maybe news bits and pieces i don't know extra bits um so yeah and uh the other thing that particularly appealed to me is these were actually owned by uh, a sony us um guy uh who actually worked for sony us and he basically um labeled everything everything is beautifully um looked after so I'm hoping these actually make really good test tapes as well. I've got a few NTSC machines that uh, I need to work on and uh, get going. So these will be great because um, I, I do assume that probably his machines <laughs> were pretty much top notch, well serviced, well looked after. So that's great. And uh, no doubt they will feature in the next 12 months various repairs and then i've got this which is um 10 us made uh esl 750 um cassettes and uh these are um sort of the the um, us equivalent to what the rest of us got um just the the standard l7 750 tapes and uh, like DX and whatever, uh, made in Japan. But these are actually made in the US. And uh, Sony did this. They, they made uh, media and well, all sorts in the US. Uh, much like Sony used to make TVs in uh, South Wales. And uh, actually knew somebody who worked at the factory uh, and subsequently became a teacher. So... Uh, yeah, really, really great to have these. Um, and <laughs> this is great as well. Uh, coupon value pack. So a lot of that's actually expired. Oh, those deals. So let's have a quick look at those deals. And uh, coupon value pack. And you can see here that it expires at uh, the end of 89. So that dates uh, the, the tapes quite nicely. So late 80s. But uh, yeah, so 80s, isn't it? Fruit, wheat. And uh, yeah, really cool. Uh, obviously, most of this is not what we would get in the UK, but really cool to see. So uh, yeah. To sort of share that with you. You might remember that my uh, beloved and probably favourite Betamax machine, uh, the SL800 uh, by Sony, um, featured in uh, briefly in a video with the PCM701 uh, PCM unit, and um, you might have noticed also that the the hinges or the the front door was missing. Now I do have the front door. And uh, I have since bought a 3D printer and have designed a hinge to replace the uh, the, the, the one and truly obliterated and smashed hinges um, from that door. Uh, they are really flimsy. 
um, and uh, it's so easy to break. It's just literally you catch that door and that's it. The hinges are going to break. So this is my first effort. And as you can see, it looks pretty good until you see the original. <laughs> <laughs> it's just quite a bit smaller. So this was my first attempt. Um, uh, really any 3D print design. And obviously I've got the scale wrong. But I let it print because I thought, A, it was quite fun to see it. And B, um, it gave me a good idea of just how good the print is. Because it's obviously much, much higher resolution uh, being 10 times too big. So there's the original um, end hinge, and these go on the end, uh, each end of the door. And this is my 3D printed effort. So, and that does work. Um, it's it's pretty successful. Uh, the only thing I need to do is uh, the center one, and I have pretty much designed this. The center hinge is a lot more beefed up. And uh, this one, this one's actually pretty intact. It's just missing the, the, the clip bits, these bits here. Um, you can see there, but you can see it's so much thicker than the, the end ones. It's such a shame in a way they didn't do the end ones as strong, give it a bit more of a fighting chance. But the the hinges, so this hinge just slides in, clips in. This hinge, you actually slide it in here and push it through to this end. Um, so that's quite interesting. And then the big middle toughened up one sits in there. So uh, I may well feature this on another updates video or another video altogether because I'm going to be doing a, a video on the SL800. I do need to rebuild the power supply. Um, the power supplies on those are slightly fragile, quite complex. Uh, the multi-voltage, also sensing, switch mode power supply, and they do need recapping, especially on the primary side. So I'll be doing that and featuring that. The reason I like the SL800 is because it is a um, multi-format um, machine, it's NTSC, it's also PAL, it's actually true CCAM as well, so not the Middle Eastern CCAM, which is sort of uh, cobbled together format, if you like, that's, that's sort of a really general way to put this, and not necessarily fair, <laughs> but um, I needed to um, archive a couple of uh, French CCAM standard uh, tapes, and this is the only machine I've found um, that I've managed to get hold of that can do it. One thing, does anybody know what actually happened to all the French CCAM Betamaxes? Because there just doesn't seem to be any about anywhere. I have searched for probably about three years now for French CCAM machine. And there are none. So, uh, yeah, I'd be interested to find out what happened there. Uh, was it some sort of recycling scheme or um, what happened? Interested to know. So I think that's it for now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, just sort of filling in the gaps and a few other bits and pieces as well that are going on. Um, and I just want to say a huge thanks to everybody that subscribed and has commented, and um, has generally followed the channel. It's absolutely wonderful. And uh, like I say, I started this channel to sort of document working on these things and effectively living the dream of working on these machines and getting them out to people that want a relatively reliable machine um, to play that Betamax tapes and share the dream, basically, I suppose. But um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe. It really does mean so much to me. And uh, lots more to come in 2022 and beyond. And uh, yeah, see you in another video. Bye for now.